This is the San Francisco Americans pretend does not exist. They think I'm making it up. San Francisco? Yeah. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you about San Francisco. <laughs> San Francisco ain't did a thing for me. I mean, ever since I got out of high school, I had a couple of jobs. I worked at a couple of hat companies and uh, warehouses. I mean, after a while, they say, uh, well, uh, I guess we're going to lay you off for a couple of weeks, you know. All right, they talk about the South. The South is not half as bad as San Francisco. You want me to tell you about San Francisco? Yes, I'll tell you about San Francisco. The white man, he's not, he's not taking advantage of you out in public like they're doing down in Birmingham, but he's killing you with that pencil and paper, brother. When you go to look for a job, can you get a job? Can you get a job, Winkle? What is really crucial is whether or not the country, the people in the country, the citizenry, are able to recognize that there is no moral distance, no moral distance, which is to say no distance, between the facts of life in San Francisco and the facts of life in Birmingham. And there is no moral distance, which is to say no distance, between President Kennedy and Bull Connor because the same machine put them both in power. We've got to call it, you know, we've got to tell it like it is. And that's where it's at. Redevelopment also. What do you mean? You say redevelopment meaning? You mean what? removal of Negroes. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's what I thought you meant. <laughs> In other words, a lot of the Negroes who came because the Japanese were pushed out now are being pushed out. Now being pushed out themselves. That's right. In effect, San Francisco is reclaiming this. That's right. This property. That's right. To build it up, which means Negroes have to go. That's right. And in where are they going to go? Well, they're going out to Hunters Point and to the. Uh, Hey, Ashby area and also at Ocean View and where they can find reasonable Rent. rents. Yeah. yeah. South of Market and all these other places. Wherever they can find cheap rent. In other words, well, well, go, going from one ghetto to the other. Yes. I think this is one of the real troubles is that the Negro has, in San Francisco, he, he doesn't really know his place because it hasn't been really spelled out. I mean, yeah. he's trying to, to to find his place and he's so, you know, this is one of the problems, you know. I mean, what place is it for me, you know? He came out to escape. And then yeah. you, you, you keep prison trying to... another prison. That's right. You know, you find yourself, and you find yourself facing the Pacific Ocean, you know, that's yes. the place has to go. Yes, yes, yes. You know? You live around me too. Yeah. In a temporary house? No, I said a project. That's a temporary house. It ain't no temporary house no more. They're tearing them down. That's just a temporary house. I ain't no more. We ain't gonna be no place when they get through. We're gonna be living out on the street. Make you feel bad? Yeah, make you feel bad. Won't be no place to go. We'd be living out here on the streets and tents. Yeah. Where would you like to go? If you could? Yeah. What, what part of San Francisco would you yeah. like to go? I stay up here on top of the hill. You would? Uh, How long have you been living on top of the hill? Ever since I've been born.
I imagine it would be easy to get by a person working through San Francisco to imagine that everything was at peace. Because it certainly looks that way on the, you know, on the surface. San Francisco is much prettier than New York. It's, it's easier to hide in San Francisco than it is in New York. Because you've got the view, you've got the hills, you've got the, you got the San Francisco legend too, which is that it's a cosmopolitan and um, forward looking. But it's just another American city. And if you're a black man, that means it's a better thing to say. Children dying here, as they are in New York, for the very same reason. Let's see some somewhat better place to lie about, which really all it comes to. Nobody wants to destroy the image of San Francisco. My main problem is uh, finding a job. Uh, yesterday I talked to a guy, uh, a white fellow that worked at a filling station. He got out of service two months and he got two jobs. I've been here eight years and I worked about three steady jobs. And uh, I look every day. Just like he said, he started out, he looked maybe once or twice a day and he worked at a filling station and worked long term work. And he told me from his own mouth who was on top. He didn't come out and say it, just like I'm going to say it. But he came out and told me that uh, you got to know somebody in San Francisco to get somewhere. And by knowing somebody, it's got to be somebody with authority. And nobody in San Francisco, no colored man, got no authority. You know what I mean? No, there are no Negro leaders in San Francisco. Did you feel well, that? There are a few. You? There are a few. Do you know any? No, I don't know any. But the ones that get up there, the ones that get up there, they don't want to help nobody. You know one has, no, one, no one has ever helped you? No, nobody would have thought it. Besides my parole officer. I conclude, correct me if I'm wrong, that all this has something to do with money. Land has been reclaimed for money, and that people are putting up their houses so they can make a profit. But it seems to me, I'm not attacking what is called a profit motive. There are some things more important than profits. I know New York City has been turned into a desert, really, for the same reason. And it's happening in San Francisco now. It's as though one the society made the assumption that certain acts on the assumption that to make money, it's more important than to have citizens. We're paying to high price for this. Because there's only, there's only what it's doing to Negro children, which is God knows bad enough. It's what it does to white children who grow up believing that it is more important to make a profit than it is to be a man. And that's the way that society really operates. I don't care what the society says. This is what it operates. This is the goal it sets. These goals aren't worthy of a man. Adolescents know it.